So we had the first war break out with Assyria joining together with the Ottomans to take out the Huns. This has a huge diplomatic uh, dominate, domino effect because now Russia's a lot safer to expand. And if Russia's a lot safer to expand, that means that you know, how, what, what land is going to be left in the kind of Russian modern day territory for someone like Poland to expand towards or the Scandinavian uh, countries to expand towards. This, this ultimately is going to have a huge domino effect, I think, in this game. And for those of you that think that, you know, Europe's not going to be doing any better. They're still going to have some problems. Let's just look at the Info Addict screen. Yes, Info Addict is a mod that I'm playing with. I forgot to mention that beforehand. Uh, let's look at the amount of science output per turn. We've got uh, in the top 10, Germany, Spain, Sweden, Rome, Austria, France, the Netherlands, Denmark, Ottomans, and Byzantium. Uh, that's pretty big. And let's actually look at the numbers here. In terms of the numbers, yeah you're going to see some huge range of numbers. So, again, it's going to make things really, really interesting because what wins out a very wide, expansive empire or is it technology? Or does a focused techno technological empire win out? Uh, as you can see, the Inca, Mongolia, Azant uh, the, the Aztecs, Iroquois, the Zulu, Korea, these guys are down at the bottom. America, Brazil, Shoshone, some of the really strong civs are down at the bottom. Uh, an important thing to remember, though, is the person that's in the middle is Babylon. The, probably the strongest sieve, Babylon, here in the middle. But it, it's, it's a cultural victory. You, we we got to continue to remind ourselves that. So this doesn't really mean a lot. Uh, it really The cultural victory is going to go to the sieve that is taking over the most cities. That's ultimately how the AI wins cultural victories. There are some exceptions. I've seen India do it without really taking over that many. But uh, ultimately, you know, a lot of the tourism goes to the sieve that takes over the most. So, I mean, this is really who is going to be the strongest, who is going to take over the most amount of cities, and does that mean, you know, lots of cities for lots of production, or does it just focus on quality units like technologies? We will see. Um, yeah, we will see. So, as we talked about in the intro, I, I with these, you know, we've got a, a, little, a little war going on, and it doesn't look like Attila has too many units up just yet. Uh, he has a warrior unit around here. The Ottomans are strong, but can the Ottomans mobilize to get to Attila's court? Um, they're trying to, and they've got quite a few archers here ready to go. Attila has nothing really to defend themselves, but uh, the Ottomans are going to need every single unit if they want to take on Attila's court by themselves, or they need to get support from Assyria. Either one would help, probably. Let's see, Pathion. Spain. Ooh. Spain has gotten their Pathion up. Okay, that's a big deal. Uh, we have Washington going for his second city in New York. Okay, there goes the Aztecs with their third city. Uh, Shoshone aren't doing much, unfortunately, and the Iroquois aren't either. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, nothing going on in South Brazil or so South America. And we do see the Zulu with two cities, about to be their third. Siam's gotten their second city. Uh, anything else? Persia hasn't started moving out to the east yet to connect with India. There goes the Assyrian settler. He's moving quite far up north. Uh, and Mongolia grabbed this area. Oh, but Korea's got their settler up. Very good. Now, ultimately, let's remember that no matter who wins this game, at the end of the day, Florence is the real winner. The, the, the real winner. I, I can't even speak of the, the god of Florence without uh, kind of... Uh, Stumbling on my words. We should just call Florence the one who shall not be named. Uh, just because they're too powerful. It's kind of a joke whenever I bring up Florence's name. Compare them to any of these civs here. Because Florence is just so powerful. Uh, anyways. So the Netherlands have reached out. A lot of their uh, their tiles. Looks like they've gone tradition. Which is important. And I probably will check on that. Maybe in the next, uh, maybe in the next video we'll check on exactly which uh, civs went for which opening social trees. Social policy trees. Oh. German settler moving through the Baltic Sea and going for kind of uh, maybe Finland. Maybe we might see a German Finland. That'll be pretty cool. Poland still hasn't gotten their, their uh, settler up, and you know if you're rooting for settler, if you're root, if you're rooting for Poland, that's not good for you. But if you're anyone but Poland, you gotta be you know if you're rooting for anyone but Poland, then you gotta kind of be happy because you know I think it's safe to say that. Poland's on everyone's radar, Babylon is on everyone's radar, but can they do this with the scale technologies? I don't know. Uh, but you can say that, you know, it's good if you're rooting against Poland that they don't have another settler up because obviously, you know, the more cities, the better. For the AI, that's really what it comes down to, is the more cities, the better. Uh, pretty big military from uh, England. You know, that's what we need to check on. 
And and I th I, don't, I don't think I've discussed this theory yet though with uh, with anybody just yet. But when it comes down to it, I think well I talked about it briefly in video one. Whatever Civ dominates Europe, whatever the domino effect comes from, and I think it might be Spain, uh, especially because we've got an alliance between Germany and Spain right now. If Spain takes out Portugal, and then Spain goes out and takes out France. That's that's it right there. Spain's gonna be strong. Spain is gonna be really really strong, um, because we need to see. You know now these guys just need to expand. They need to fight each other. That's what it needs to come down to. Um, I'm I'm also interested to see how Germany deals with the Netherlands and Poland. Uh, I don't think anything will happen up north with the Scandinavian region just yet. Another Pathion. Who has it been? India. All right. Good for India. God of War. That's going to give them faith with every battle they win. Ugh. That might not be the best. We have the Ottomans entering the Classical Era. Uh, Europe has already entered the Classical Era. So, uh, so yeah, that's why we won't see them kind of moving up. And you know what? W one thing I want to check in the Info Addicts really quick is I want to check who has the biggest military. Because this is a big one that we should kind of keep watch out for. Well, right now it's me, but don't worry about that because I've got a nuclear submarine. Don't even worry about that. So number one is Spain. That tells a lot of things. And then second is the Ottomans, and that's because they're gearing up for war. Whoa! Four is Poland. Wow. Then we have Carthage. This is very interesting. This is very, very interesting. Although, wait a second, these numbers are super similar. It doesn't actually mean much. Uh, yeah, this, this doesn't really tell us much because, you know, a few thousand men, ultimately, at this stage in the game, isn't really telling much. Uh, dang it, I missed whatever that was. That was probably a declaration of friendship. We'll check the info addicts after this to see what that happens. Uh, see exactly what they what that said. Okay, we have China over here. Again, the Ottomans aren't mobilizing. It's still going to cause an impact. Ooh, the Huns are going for their second city. So is Russia. Munich has been settled in around Finland. Uh, might be a little bit too far to the east, but around Finland, right? Is that Finland? That might be technically still Finland that M Munich is settled in. Uh, that's close. Yeah, I don't think you can kind of tell. Uh, so yeah, we have both two new settlers coming this way. It looks like the Huns are going to be safe, but ultimately that's still going to cause a big impact. Uh, Germany is number one in terms of score. Um, dang it, what was I going to look at? Oh, I was going to go to Info Addicts and check exactly the global relationships. Let's just look at the Declaration of Friendship. So we have uh, Germany. Oh, these these uh, these are totally off. So right now we have a declaration of friendship with Spain and Austria. Oh, okay. Yeah, this this Incan Empire. I don't know why it points to that. We also have uh, who who else is friendly? That's it. Okay. Oh, this is all messed up. That sucks. And that that, that that's kind of normal when you have this many civs in the game. Uh, but yeah, we have declaration of friendship. It's just Germany friends with Spain. Germany friends with Austria for right now. I'm surprised that Assyria hasn't made it announced. Ooh, great library for William. That's going to keep him up in technology. That will certainly keep him up, keep him up in technology. But Europe, I mean, that's good to kind of defend himself. Um, but, hmm, that will be interesting. Austria still hasn't done anything with their settler yet. Haven't done anything with their settler. I'm wondering if Carthage is going to try to uh, engage a fight against uh, against Augustus Caesar. That would be interesting. Harun al-Rashid entering the classical era. Maybe that's what he's doing with this massive military. Now, what does France do? I, I imagine he's got to continue to move out towards, uh, you know, out east. I imagine. Unless, of course, he's discovering... Oh, he is. Wait a second. France just discovered the new world. So, maybe not. You know, France might be going for the first colony. And that's funny because we saw the same thing. We saw the same thing happen in the previous game. Uh, France got the first colony up, although he's got some foes out here again. For the first time, he's got foes out here. So we've got three, like I said, three Aztec cities, uh, and the Iroquois are about to get up there. Second city, so are the Shoshone. So what do we got? Uh, we have the Ottomans and Spain. Whoa, the Ottomans and Spain now. So a lot of these civs are uh, teaming up. A lot of the powerful civs are teaming up now. Yeah, teaming up for battle. We've got Germany with two friends and Spain now with two friends. Uh, and Germany and Spain have teamed up. Okay, so uh, the Netherlands have kind of uh, grouped up in the number one spot because of that uh, that wonder that they've built. I'm really interested to see who builds these wonders. More than likely, it will be someone in Europe, which ultimately, that's something that I didn't even talk about. Because they have the technologies in this region here, means that they're going to get those initial wonders. You know, and, and wonders are big. Wonders are a big deal. 
Uh, oh, the third city, third Roman city. Oh, man. I didn't even see that. So, yeah, Rome's going after Northern Africa. Uh, I, I totally forgot to discuss that point, is that, yes, because Europe has more technologies, they ultimately are going to get the wonders up before other civs outside, which, you know, wonders are a big deal. So that'll be good. I'm a little bit worried about Europe. Even though I've given them all these bonuses, i got to be honest with you, still worried about them. I still think that if they can't take things over, and if they're not smart enough to find new land to settle, they're going to have some trouble. They're still going to have some pretty big trouble. We have uh, Poland trading with Russia. Also, also uh, my final statement about the uh, about the game. There will be an ending to the game if... Because the thing about the cultural victories is AIs are sometimes dumb. And as you saw from other previous campaigns... Uh, ooh, most literate. It doesn't really matter. We can kind of check this. But uh, we've got a three-way tie between... Oh, because William got up the Great Library, it's brought, it's brought him up into that first spot. Uh, then we have France... Uh, Denmark, Elizabeth, Maria. Who's the last? Who's in last place? I know it's me, but then we've got the... Ooh, the Incas are pretty low. Shoshone, Brazil, Polynesia, Genghis, Korea. Mmm, Korea, uh, Zulu, and Washington. Uh, so yeah, you know, sometimes the AIs are kind of dumb with cultural victories, so I did make it where... or. I will make it. I will make this campaign a limit with 42 sieves. Uh, it's going to be a pretty long campaign. Um, I mean, probably not much longer than like if you ever watched my Ottoman campaign when I took over all of Europe. Uh, that was that was extremely long. That was like 60 videos. It probably won't be that long, but I will limit this campaign to uh, 400 turns. If well, we'll see. I, I don't want to make it a guarantee. That's why I didn't lock the game down to end on 400 turns. But I want to kind of just reserve that right right now. That uh, ultimately, when we're moving at like six processing turns per video, uh, Carthage and France have made a declaration of friendship. Ooh, ooh, Carthage is getting in there with Europe because I think she knows what's going on with uh, with Rome. And you know what? Look at this. Look at this settler. He's going for the new worlds. I bet you. Uh, Babylon's finally entered the classical era and so has Catherine so we'll see but I want to kind of just kind of throw that idea out there that I might end the game either around turn 400 or if it's a little it's still if it's still entertaining and there's a close victory then I'll end it a little bit later on but uh, that's just something I wanted to talk about if uh, if the game ends up where you know there's just there could be two super cultural sieves that are completely on the opposite ends of the earth that will never become uh, you know dominant with each other and I can't wait for a domination only battle because there's no freaking way a civil win domination only not in this big of a map there is no way okay so Syria still hasn't settled their city but you know what they're gonna grab Indian land uh, oh but India has his second city down good for Gandhi oh my gosh I'm so excited for this campaign I am so I'm just way too excited for this campaign jeez Okay, guys, I, I, I think uh, I, I'm going to have to wrap it up there, though. Uh, we have China going for another city, and so does Korea. Korea is going for another city there. Uh, and, oh, oh, Osaka. Oh, good. Japan's going for uh, the northern part of the Japan mainland. I'll do maybe one or two more turns before I end it. Um, but, yes, I think I've talked about everything I needed to talk about. Good for William. Getting the Great Library. That was big. That was big. The Incas have got up their city next. Uh, I, I want to see a religion spawn up in the New World. Again, I'm, uh, I really want to discuss this because I'm going to forget about the New World in the beginning because, again, all the, you know, all the action is going on in Europe right now, and that's just kind of how it's going to be. Catherine has also got up her second city and so have the Huns. I really hope that the, uh, the, the, the natives in the New World get uh, a religion. That would be so awesome if they do, I, and I really hope that they do. Uh, if not, if, if it's just in the Old World, whoever gets to the New World first is going to be really really good because there's going to be a whole bunch of cities out here that are not going to be following any religion whatsoever so that'll be interesting to see um so persia has gotten up their religious settlements which means faster border growth that's actually really good for them they'll be able to take away some land all right polynesia you get up in there buddy you get up in there okay we've got egypt settling uh right here on the mouth of the oh my the, not the nile oh my gosh i was about to just die if i forgot how to if i forgot the name of this uh river um, yeah, so three cities from Rome. Oh my gosh, this is so good. So uh, we've got the second Songhai city and the Zulu with three cities. They're about to go for their fourth one. Again, with an unpatrolled uh, Songhai, the Zulu won't be as powerful. And as we saw, the Zulu are really low in technology. And it's, he's only going to get lower and lower um, as he settles more cities. So that's not the best case scenario for him. Carthage is getting a lot of cities up. I'm sorry, a lot of units up. Morocco's got their settler out. So we might see Carthage Dido go in for an attack, but the longer she waits, 
the worse it's going to get. Maybe she might be waiting for her unique boat. Uh, when she gets up her unique unique boat, that's going to be uh, pretty crazy. Oh my gosh, I really, really hope that we see France. Yes, it looks like it. France, you know what? England might be going for it too. Ooh, ooh, oh my gosh, yes. It, but is England might be going for Ireland at the same time. Who knows? But oh my gosh, this is what I wanted to see in the first place, man. This is what I've wanted to see in the first place. Uh, you know, history really kind of gives me... Uh, gets me really, really excited, as you can see. Uh, Greece is up here on the north part of the Black Sea. Having this, these AI-only battles kind of, kind of, you know, depict history somewhat is so exciting to me. And it, you know, with slight variations makes it so fun. And I'm, uh, I need to really kind of calm down and try to control myself because I'm way, way too excited for this. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.